A giant disk underneath a firmament dome. The Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, science told us we live on a globe. A spinning ball shot into infinite space. They want us to believe that we are nothing but random stardust. Meaningless. But they're wrong. They die. Wake up. The Earth is flat. The Earth is flat. It was once a time when our little planet seemed immense, when it was the only world we could explore. Its true size was first worked out in a simple and ingenious way by a man who lived here in Egypt in the third century BC. Far to the south, he read, at the frontier outpost of Syene, something notable could be seen on the longest day of the year. On June 21st, the shadows of a temple column or a vertical stick would grow shorter as noon approached. And as the hours crept towards midday, the sun's rays would slither down the sides of a deep well, which on other days would remain in shadow. And then, precisely at noon, columns would cast no shadows, and the sun would shine directly down into the water of the well. At that moment, the sun was exactly overhead. It was an observation that someone else might easily have ignored. Um, sticks, shadows, reflections in wells, the position of the sun, simple everyday matters of what possible importance might they be. But Eratosthenes was a scientist, and his contemplation of these homely matters changed the world, in a way, made the world. Because Eratosthenes had the presence of mind to experiment to actually ask whether back here near Alexandria a stick cast a shadow near noon on June the 21st and it turns out sticks do here's a map of ancient Egypt I've inserted two sticks or obelisks one up here in Alexandria 
and one down here in Syene. Now, if at a certain moment, each stick casts no shadow, no shadow at all, that's perfectly easy to understand, provided the Earth is flat. If the shadow at Syene is at a certain length, and the shadow at Alexandria is the same length, that also makes sense on a flat Earth. But how could it be, Eratosthenes asked, that at the same instant, there was no shadow at Syene and a very substantial shadow at Alexandria. The only answer was that the surface of the Earth is curved. Not only that, but the greater the curvature, the bigger the difference in the lengths of the shadows. The sun is so far away that its rays are parallel when they reach the Earth. Sticks at different angles to the sun's rays will cast shadows at different lengths. For the observed difference in the shadow lengths, the distance between Alexandria and Syene had to be about seven degrees along the surface of the Earth. By that I mean, if you imagine these sticks extending all the way down to the center of the Earth, they would there intersect at an angle of about seven degrees. Well, seven degrees is something like a 50th of the full circumference of the Earth, 360 degrees. Eratosthenes knew the distance between Alexandria and Syene. He knew it was 800 kilometers. Why? Because he hired a man to pace out the entire distance so that he could perform the calculation I'm talking about. Now, 800 kilometers times 50 is 40,000 kilometers. So that must be the circumference of the Earth. That's how far it is to go once around the Earth. That's the right answer. Eratosthenes' only tools were sticks, eyes, feet, and brains, plus a zest for experiment. idea? Well, take a look at the angle of the rays. If the sun was 93 million miles away, all the light rays from the sun would be parallel. And if you were going to try and hide this information that the sun is actually very close, perhaps you'd uh, encode it in symbol. Does this look familiar? This was done by a, some school kids that sent the balloon up. And as you can see, this camera is panning right, and the horizon is completely flat, and it is eye level, which means that the Earth is flat. No curvature. And the higher you go, the further out it goes, and it remains flat. Continue to watch this video. There is another example of um, some children in a Christian school who did the same thing. They sent a balloon up about 18 miles, and the results are the same. So there's plenty of evidence to show that we live on a flat, plain Earth. Absolutely, there's no question about it. We've been lied to. NASA has lied, and they created all this illusion, and it's nothing but one big fat lie.